Adam came the first time with the blueprint that he passed on to you to build walls. The second Adam came to be the blueprint for building a bridge. That's how God, the Creator, is solving the problem of our wall building. What does a good God, a Creator God, do about this problem? I'll tell you. He sends one. One who has a different blueprint. Not to build walls, but to build a bridge. Jesus was intentionally, he did this on purpose, relational with those who this society, the Jewish society, would have called those are deplorables, vile. They're an abomination to God. Stay away from those types of people. Okay? Again, here's what you're going to learn. Jesus is going to show us how to build bridges with people that we would consider the others, our enemies. Look back at verses 1 through 4. Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee, and he had to pass through, say the town. I would like you, if you're an underliner or a circler or a highlighter, circle the words had to and ask why. I'm going to show you some things here that you maybe have never learned before. First, Look at the whole text on the screen. This is the whole passage we're looking at this morning. I know you can't read that, especially up there. It's a very small font. But when I'm studying the Bible, I, I want to show you how to do this. You look for repeating terms. I'm going to show you what the theme of this entire text is. Ready? One, two, three. Show it, Logan. This is entirely about these people and this town where these people lived that was an absolute no-go. You never go there because these people are an abomination to God. They're deplorable. They're vile. We have no relationship with them whatsoever. Okay? Jesus, it says, had to go through there. I drew a map for you. It's a crude map, okay, but it works. Here it is on the screen. This is a basic map of that area. You can see He's in Judea right now. That's where Jesus is. And he's on his way to Galilee. What's the quickest way? Through Samaria, straight line. Let me show you the way that the Pharisees would get to Galilee. Look at this. Look at their, their, their map. Now, you might not be able to see this. I made that blue line really thick there. That's the Jordan River. They went out of their way to cross the Jordan River not once, but twice on foot because they hated these people that much. It's like you with the woman from Thanksgiving. If she's going to be there, I'm not coming. I'll cross the Jordan on foot rather than see her. Same thing. They're the deplorables. They went out of their way to avoid them. Look at the route Jesus took. Look, the path is not to avoid. The path is them. That's where I'm going. I have to pass through Samaria. I told you to highlight her under that had to. Can I tell you why? I read as many commentaries as I could possibly drink in this week, and they almost all agreed. He had to because, this is where I came up with the title for the whole sermon. This wowed me. He had to because he was operating under a different blueprint. If you're operating under the blueprint of Adam, you take the root of the Pharisees because that's what all the Adams did. You build walls. But if you have a different set of schematics that come from the harmony of heaven, you go directly to the deplorables. They are the mission. He doesn't avoid Samaria. Samaria is the destination. The people you hate are the destination. That's why he's here. He sought out places where the walls were the highest, and he went there with a sledgehammer of love. And so now you need to be thinking, as we're talking, where are the walls highest in me? Is there a particular person that I've built a wall around and I just have no relationship with them because they're hard? And is he asking me to carry a cross and go and talk to that person? Pattern number two in the Bridge Builder's Blueprint. Jesus was intentionally, oh, this is going to be so good. 
vulnerable with the negligible. And I mean, that's how people saw these people in society. She's worth nothing. No one would even miss her if she died. She has no business. She doesn't spend money. She doesn't contribute to anything. She's a nobody. Those are the kinds of people who are most vulnerable in society. And those are the ones that Jesus went to and was vulnerable with. And I'm telling you, this is a masterful way to build bridges. I'm going to show it to you. This is a master at work. Watch this. Verse 5 through 8. So he came to a town of Samaria. Now you know everything there is to know pretty much about Samaria. Called Sychar near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, look at this church, wearied as he was from his journey, sitting beside the well. It's about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. He's weary from his journey, okay? And so he goes up to a Samaritan woman and asks her for a a drink of water. Can I remind you who we're talking about here? This is the man who a few weeks earlier turned water into wine. This is a man who in just a few weeks is going to speak to the ocean that's right over there and say, shush. And it says, yes, master. This is a man who when it rains, he says, stop. And it stops. Does he need a woman from Samaria to give him water? Or can he just go to a rock and say, give me some water? He doesn't need her. So why does he ask her for some water? Do you think he's being intentional here? Vulnerability is the precursor to trust. And and bridges are built on two pillars, just two. This is the bridge that Adam had with God and his sin crushed it. The bridge of all relationships with your wives, your kids, your bank is built on trust and truth. Those two. As soon as a crack starts to happen in either of those pillars, the relationship starts to get affected. And if it's a big enough crack, the relationships crumble. Jesus is starting to build a trust relationship with this woman. And how do you do it? When you find somebody weak in society, somebody who's been overlooked and told they're insignificant, you have to be vulnerable with them. You have to bring them to a place where they say, okay, this man isn't going to hurt me. Look them in the eyes. Jesus is building a trust relationship by asking her for something that he doesn't need her for. He's weary from his journey on purpose. Pattern number three in the Bridge Builder's Blueprint is this. Jesus was intentionally impartial with the marginal. And by marginal, I mean those who are on the fringe of society, those who you'd say, they're immoral. The parents, you'd say, stay away from that one, okay? Immoral, and by the way, this is a woman. And for Jesus, you just don't talk to women, let alone immoral women. He's gonna show us how to have no prejudice or bias to treat everybody equally especially those on the fringe. Take a look at verse 9, and then we're going to glance down at verse 27. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Now, hang on a second. I'm going to ask you to fast forward through that good part I was telling you about at the beginning of the service. Verse 10 through 26 has the dialogue that we all want to get to next week. Fast forward a couple of minutes, the dialogue is over, and the disciples come back. And they see Jesus. Dude, who is he talking to? And they go over to him, and they're like, Jesus, um, who are you talking to? Do you think that they were more shocked that he's talking to a Samaritan or that he's talking to an immoral woman? Look at verse 27. Just then the disciples came back, and they marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? Listen to me. Talking with a Samaritan was unusual. Talking with a woman was unconventional. Talking with an immoral woman, which you'll see next week she was, was to these disciples and every Jew absolutely disgraceful. You, look, if you're a man, there's only one reason why you'd be talking to a woman like this. And yet it says, 
Nobody asked him why. Do you know why? They knew. Jesus was talking with this woman to help her tear down those walls. He had a different blueprint with her, operating under a completely different agenda. In my study this week, I read numerous, numerous commentaries, and this is rare, what I'm about to tell you. Very rare. Every one of them, every one of them, compared the conversation Jesus just ended with Nicodemus, the professor of law, and this Samaritan woman. Because you remember, there's no chapter verses in your Bible. Those are, those are superficial. We put those there. Picture John. He's writing. The Holy Spirit is pouring into him, and he's writing out the account of the life of Jesus. And he begins with this relationship with Nicodemus, the scholarly law professor. The next thought on his mind is the conversation with this woman at the well. It's the same idea in John's head. And every single commentator compared them, and one of them did it fantastic. And I want to share it with you. His name is James Montgomery Boyce. He was a phenomenal teacher. Look at what he says. I just found this fascinating. It's difficult to imagine a greater contrast between two persons than the contrast between the important and sophisticated Nicodemus, this ruler of the Jews, and the simple Samaritan woman. He was a Jew. She was a Samaritan. He was a Pharisee. She belonged to no religious party. He was a politician. She had no status whatsoever. He was a scholar. She was uneducated. He had a name. Oh, uh, hey, by the way, what's this woman's name at the well? I forgot. You never get told. Because no one cared. He had a name. She was nameless. He was a man. She was a woman. He came at night to protect his reputation. She, who had no reputation, came at noon. Nicodemus came seeking. The woman was sought by Jesus. A great contrast. Yet, the point of the stories is that both the man and the woman needed the gospel and were welcome to it. If Nicodemus is an example of the truth that no one can rise so high as to be above salvation, the woman is an example of the truth that no one can sink too low. Jesus came to destroy all of the little compartmentalizations to keep it neat in our minds. He wiped them all out and said, every single one of you, from the scholarly theology professor to the woman who nobody even knows she exists, every one of you needs a bridge. And I'm it. Did you learn something from the bridge builder this morning? you have a choice to make. Either you follow in the first Adam who will help you build big giant walls or you can follow in the footsteps of the second Adam who has a different blueprint and will help you build bridges in your life. Hi, I'm Pastor Luke here at Island Bible Church on Long Beach Island. Thank you so much for watching this video. I pray that you found it both challenging and uplifting. Please don't forget to like and share this video and feel free to hit the subscribe button to see more just like this one. For our full-length sermons, you can find those here on our YouTube channel or you can go to our website, hopeoflbi.com.